matter of fact you know if you want to give a put a creed you know if you've excuse me heard of the apostles creed the nicene creed and i know there's at least one other creed you know and and what they would do is they would come up with these sayings these bullet points of okay this is what it means to be a christian because of like i was saying about first john is is people started changing who jesus was oh he didn't really have a body or or it, it um he had a body but he left at the cross um, so there is no resurrection of the body. All those are subtle things to get rid of Jesus's body to excuse yourself not to walk righteous in your body. So they, uh, the heart, the real church, where they would come up with creeds to say, okay, this is what it means to really be a Christian. So if you want the basic Christian creed, you want to know you're a Christian? We can do this simple right here, right now. If you believe this, that Almighty God became a man born through the Virgin Mary, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born into a body from Mary, born into a body capable of sin, but never sinned, walked 33 and a half years without sinning, died under the weight of our sin as our substitute to pay the price of judgment from a holy God. So he died and went to hell to pay that price and then rose again from the dead back into that same body now glorified now if you believe that in your heart and you confess with your mouth jesus i make you lord of my life you become born again but it does not just mean okay i believe that in here james chapter 2 says look the devils believe that uh he is lord you know so that doesn't do you anything the difference is that inside that creed that i just told you was Jesus walked sin free in his body, which means you should walk sin free in yours. The same life he had while he, in his spirit, while he was in a body still from Adam, still capable of sin, he was tempted in every way like we, yet without sin. But if he walked sin free, then you and I should walk sin free in our body. So you cannot separate, you cannot just say, oh, I believe here that Jesus did this for me, therefore I'm saved. You know, it, it starts out that way for, you know, the first second. You know, I like to think of the thief uh, on the cross, you know. He, he simply believed Jesus was Lord and then he died. You know, he really didn't do any kind of good works or walk really kind of righteous or anything. Of course, his first righteous act was accepting Jesus as Lord. So that, that definitely is a righteous act. But my point is, now that you believe the gospel and you've got born again, you must walk righteous um, as he was righteous. That is the heart of the gospel, is walking like Jesus walked. And if you try to maintain, oh, I believe Jesus is Lord, I believe Jesus died and rose again for me, but you don't walk righteous, you don't believe that. Um, and that's the problem that First uh, John is addressing, that if you do believe what you say you believe about Jesus being Lord and Savior, you'll walk righteous as he's righteous and as long as you do walk righteous you'll always stay connected to your born again experience but if you start going south on this thing and not walking righteous even though you're saying all the right things in your on your lips you're separating yourself from your born again experience and you can easily get to the place where you go back to spiritual death